Hey guys, welcome back to Emolition. I'm Emma, this is Emolition. Today we're gonna to be reacting to Maxor's Bloodborne review, Doll Waifu Simulator. This has been recommended to me by a fair few of you. Uh, we've been watching Elden Ring lore on the channel at the moment in preparation for the DLC, but after I finished Bloodborne, I never watched any lore videos about it. So I have a vague idea myself of the point of Bloodborne, but I'm intrigued to dive into a bit more detail um, with Maxor here. I've been kind of ill the last month or so and unable to actually play any games. We're currently in the middle of Sekiro, but I don't think I'll be able to play for another week or so because uh, I have some ongoing issues with my hands. So we're just gonna dive into some lore today instead and hopefully be back gaming very soon. Thank you guys for all your patience with me on this channel. Um, it's really annoying not being able to play games because that's kind of what I do. So yeah, but <laughs> it's fine. Let's watch uh, Maxwell's video. Enjoy. This video has been hailed as something of like an urban legend in the Soulsborne lore videos. So I've been told it's quite a different vibe from Varty. So I'm excited. I think the title and the thumbnail alone show me that this is going to be an experience. But I'm excited. So let's hit that little triangle in the corner also known as a play button. Do you have spoilers? Bloodborne is a Lovecraftian <laughs> horror RPG that no one understands by definition, where the player is free to attack hordes of human children at will and consume their innards. If that in-depth and engaging anti-baby gameplay appeals to you, keep listening because <laughs> it gets worse. In this game, you play as John Bloodborne, a foreigner incapable of speech without the use of sign language, and stricken with Habsburg disease comes to the- My brain doesn't work this fast. Oh my God, it's been 23 seconds, I feel like. <laughs> Just, okay, this is not clearly a video I'm gonna be able to continually pause and um, <laughs> make comments on, but I just wanna say that, um, oh, I'm just choking, don't mind me. Um, one thing that people picked up on during my Let's Play was just the um, reckless abandon with which I happily kill children. And I hope that that doesn't get clipped and taken out of context. It was um, it was leading up to the nightmare of Mensis, um, the Mikalash fight. Sorry, where there's those little children, like kind of walking around the fat butcher-looking ladies, and I was like, they all have to die. They must die. Anyway, let's watch this. The ancient city of London seeking treatment for the sins of his cousins. In doing so, he will begin hallucinating talking dolls, spider people, and the great <laughs> Journeying further, John Bloodborne becomes conscripted into the service of a gay elder god and the 60-year-old yes. man he keeps as a pet, and is given the ultimate task of killing an invisible infant in order to cure his anemia. To accomplish said Herculean task, the player must journey through dark forests, terrifying nightmares, and the meth-ridden alleyways of a post-Brexit Britain, slaying monsters, exploring <laughs> and tricking women into being impregnated by God so you can consume the child. This game is an excellent realization oh, of a Metroidvania true. with something new around every corner. A great action RPG which pits you against insurmountable odds and extreme challenges and has a gripping story and lore about discovering the Eldritch truth. So if you can, play it yourself because I'm not going to hold back on the details. It's no secret that my reviews are entertainment first, so I don't suggest using me as genuine advice. <laughs> However, most people can't play this game, ever, because you have to buy a $400 magical box sold by the wizard Sony in order to experience it. And even oh, then, you yeah, get to see it in an amazing 30 frames per second with no anti-aliasing. Port this game to PC, I beg of you. In fact, I can assume that a lot of people watching this video will basically never play the game. But keep watching, because I'm hilarious and original. Do that, and I can give you the full, unfiltered, uncensored, yes. unsubstantiated, and unsportsmanlike experience that is Bloodborne. Game. All right, okay, let's unpack that. Two minutes. Incredible. I'm speechless. Maxo, wow. <laughs> You're a genius. You are a genius. Um, 10 out of 10 use of memes. Love the attacks on Britain because uh, we kind of suck, right? Um, and also 
just to say i forget that not a lot of people are able to play bloodborne because of the fact it's only on ps4 i've never thought about that because i am you know a privileged sony player i forget that it's still not on pc why isn't it on pc yet Duh! Okay, brilliant. I've had a really bad month, you guys. Like, really bad fighting an infection. Basically have scarlet rot, it feels. This has made me very happy. So let's find out about Bloodborne together <laughs> and have a lovely time doing it is what makes this game great and the easiest way to describe it is simple but complicated. On a simple level, your baby brain is responsible for only two tasks, dodging and hitting. And dodging in this game renders you temporarily invincible. Sounds easy, right? Wrong. Because every single enemy is adjusted to keep pace with you. Basic enemies are basically able to whoop your ass into fucking non-existence. Every encounter, therefore, is tense and engaging. When you kill someone, it's because you were faster and had more meth than they did. On a complicated level, you have a gun and normally bullets hurt people. But in London, bullets are a suggestion like the Geneva Convention. <laughs> Here in England, it's all about the knife bins. Except when you shoot somebody mid-attack, you gain the mystical and arcane ability to plunge your fist through their ribcage like Mortal Kombat and rip out their heart, yeah. which is considered rude Hell and a yeah. slight annoyance. This extends to behind them if you charge an attack, which sometimes causes you to reach up a pig's asshole and rip out the prostate <laughs> like fruit by the foot. Side note, the most optimal farming route for currency in this game is called Murgo's Pig Fisting Route. See, I changed the webpage. And in this route, you sneak up behind this guy and do him the dirty. Then, entice yeah. these two swindler bastards to be mauled to death by members of organization 13 repeat 50 times <laughs> on a complicated level every single weapon in the game has two different modes with two different movesets and transforming between them gives you special attacks in addition to running attacks plunging attacks on a theoretical physicist level your character memorizes <laughs> squiggly lines and fridge art created by gods for passive bonuses that work regardless of weaponry my favorites are more money more money and more money they stack mm. finally on a meta theoretical chiropractic level every weapon is customizable <laughs> Why did that get me? <laughs> Why did that get me? Uh, I think it's because me and my best friend always say like when we're in pain, it's like physical, spiritual, mental, metaphysical, emotional. Oh God. I'm gonna have some of my coffee. While we're talking about trick weapons, someone asked me the other day, if I could make my own trick weapon, what would it be? And I thought that was a really cool question, but I didn't have an answer because I have no original ideas. Um, that's why I'm reacting to someone else's hard work. <laughs> but it's a good question and I'd like to know what you guys think. Think of the craziest trick weapon. I think if I had to make one, it would be the Whirly Gig Saw, but it already exists. Like I said, no original ideas. With different gem slots, they give differing effects for your attacks. And there are different types that can literally change all of the stats of the weapon. Like making a fucking spear do more damage based off of intelligence. There's definitely more and a lot of strategy in how you level up your character. But I assume that you know how to level up in a fucking video game. But with all this combat prowess, you may be wondering, Maxor, who are these crusty abominations that you're fighting on screen? Well, to yeah. learn that much, we're going to have to delve into the lore. So buckle <laughs> yes. your bridges, bitches, because this shit is wild. If I say something questionable, just accept it. It is fact, I can be trusted. 60 years ago, 20 rowdy college students took their education extremely seriously because they found woman Cthulhu. She was just in a portable toilet downstairs. Also, because they were bored, they beat to death a god of the sea with some bats, but that's a story for later. It turns out the entire world is ruled and created by a race of elder gods beyond human comprehension called the Great Ones. Figuring this out, they got Cthulhu's blood and were like, we can make a religion out of this. Because okay, sorry. Do the like outer gods aspects of things and the great ones not remind you of the outer will and the gods of Elden Ring? Could London exist in the same world as the lands between? Maybe the lands between are between London and Birmingham. Maybe. Because it turns out the blood can heal people, which is really good due to all the knife crime. So everyone starts drinking it a little too much and they get the money to build 36 cathedrals. But it turns out eventually <laughs> the blood right. turns you into a werewolf. So the church hires a guy named German to go fight the beasts with an organization known as the Hunters. But there's too many beasts, so he gives up. Now the knife crime is increased even more and German sort of goes insane and creates a life-size doll of one of his students who is an eight foot tall Amazonian. He also canonically has Ooh. sex with it. The moon Ooh. god, for some reason, kind of takes notice of this and is like, all right, listen, 
I'm building a suicide squad. I will bring your waifu to laifu if you serve me for all time as my slave. German reasonably thinks that this is a great deal and is imprisoned in a dream. This is where you come in. Oh. See, the moon god assassinates baby gods for fun, but needs a hitman to go into the real world to do it since he's confined to the ninth dimension. So in addition to fighting all manner of giant beasts and uncovering dark secrets, the true aim of this game is to commit infanticide. There's enough bullshit here to fill tax legislation, so comment your own poorly summarized Bloodborne lore below. And for the rest of us non-chills, we have ample time to explain more of what makes this game great. Yes, what? you have been jinked. I am talking about bosses before I talk about the levels. In most video games, bosses cap off areas, but in Bloodborne, areas are preambles to a dick flattening, and nothing will challenge your skill in quite the same way. Except for the goddamn Witches of Hemwick, who were placed yeah. into the game for disability access. You can probably tell that Bloodborne is a hard game. We don't even know if a games journalist can beat it. But it's hard in a fair way that tests your skills and reaction time, except for Lawrence, but I'll get back to Lawrence later. What sets this game's bosses apart is that the challenge makes it feel like you're a really small dude jabbing a toothpick into a building sized deer demon. So yeah, I would be impressed if he killed that. But not only that, unlike Dark Souls, every single boss reacts meaningfully to how you attack them. Large That's beasts true, can actually. have their bones cracked and their tendons wound into a slinky. Bone boys can be knocked over and have their marrow sicked. And human enemies will wince and recoil when they see your height difference. As well, every boss punishes you for cowardice and actively discourages backpedaling with their forward momentum, causing every fight to be an elaborate dance with a thrilling back and forth. Unless you're fighting Rom, who is the really hungry caterpillar if he had a legion of arachnid slaves who threw their heads <laughs> underground like ostriches. We don't talk about him. And while we're on the subject of bad bosses, oh, this stop. motherfucker, let me tell you something. The humanoid bosses in this game If you if you watched my let's play I almost didn't upload my Mikalash episode because I was so embarrassed about how badly it went. Up till that point, obviously I'd found Bloodborne hard. I'm not trying to flex. But it wasn't like to the point where I thought I may have to quit until Mikkel Ash because I could not get him into that side room for love nor money. It was horrific. And it was the first video I'd ever recorded or made where I was like, I'm going to lose subscribers over this because this is such a poor display. But weirdly, it was one of the most watched videos in the series because it turns out you sick fucks absolutely love struggles. That's why you watch people play these games, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> Admit it. <laughs> ...are paradoxically the most dangerous, but Mikalash is a psychological hazard that will hurt you personally. This boss literally feels like cut content because the fight centers around chasing him and yeah. his direction depends on RNG, making him an actual speedrun killer. When you corner him, he uses one attack and then Ugh. you chase him again where he gains the power to insta-kill you. God forbid you're hit by it because that's 10 minutes gone. Here's a tip. Save up 10 poison knives and steal from your family if you must. Then wait until he jumps down this hole poison him repeatedly and watch him spaz the fuck out until death you will thank yeah, nice. me but as a result of everyone who isn't miko shit conquering a boss in this game is absolutely rewarding on a level that other games cannot match it's only yeah. because the odds are stacked against you in ways that don't feel bullshit most of the time that conquering them is the main reason i play and their fights are undoubtedly the best i've ever done in video games but that isn't most mm. of the time in the game in fact a lot of your time is spent exploring the areas so let's get into that lesson one in area design where the fuck am i going exploration <laughs> is the name of the game except it's called Bloodborne. Only this time, you don't bring smallpox and kill 20 million people. We're looking at a solid 10 this time. Because the main enemies in this game are British townspeople. It's how the developers made sure you didn't feel bad about killing them. The plague of beasts <laughs> infecting London causes people's teeth to become beast-like, makes you aggressive oh. at night, and slurs your speech. So it's up to you to stop them, as a hunter should. If you don't look up where to go next in this game, good fucking luck. People get lost all the time. Get used to it. This game doesn't do exploration like, oh look, there's loot in this hallway. My Dopamine's gonna go crazy. That's baby shit. This is daddy's exploration where you find a route back to a place you were in 10 hours ago. And I yeah. hope you weren't expecting a mini map or any map. Every single hallway is a rabbit hole of discovery and your hand isn't held. Case in point, Cathedral Ward is a level but feels like a hub area because it connects to fucking everything. And where you start the game is in the middle of a loop-de-loop -loop involving torturous experimentation. Just look at the fucking map of this game. Everything overlaps. And yes, there is a level called Nightmare Lecture. So for me... Um, I feel like I'm taking this really seriously because I have so many thoughts about Bloodborne and this isn't necessarily, you know, a serious <laughs> video. But I mean, the laws are there, right? Like the actual content is really serious, but 
for me, the the interconnectivity of Yarnum and of Bloodborne is like one of the best in any Souls game I've played. I think because it's a horror and so frightening with so many horrific creatures and monsters and darkness and terror and nightmares, etc., you feel such a sense of relief when you loop back to somewhere you've already been and you feel like retrospective comfort. Like when you first get to Central Yarnum, you're like, this is hell. I can hear the cleric beast screaming his little heart out. I don't know what I'm doing. And then it's like hours of trauma and then boom, you get back to Central Yarnum and you think, thank God, thank God we're here. Comfort, peace at last, um, because it feels like better the devil you know. Like, this place sucks, but at least I've been here before. Um, and it's when you come out of the forest, right? So you're happy to be above ground, in the daylight, uh, somewhere that you've already been. And I think um, Bloodborne does a, a really fantastic job of tying the world together and making you feel so lost but then giving you that like little nibble of safety. I think that's a fantastic device. I really do. Hall, and no, it does not connect to the altar of despair, although you would think that. Fittingly, the lecture hall is the smallest area, and more fittingly, 90% of the combat is graduates throwing cum at you. The game also has two completely secret areas that you would not find without the internet. I would tell you how to enter, but I don't want to do calculus. And what you get at the end? Upper Cathedral Ward is legitimately a horror area in yeah. a game loved for its combat, because it's filled with enemies who act out my greatest fears. Stealing currency permanently gives me fucking chills every time I talk about it. Castle Kanehurst is pretty <laughs> Proof that From Software hates us all, since the best area in the entire game requires you to go to the Field of Corn in Ohio and trek down Waldo. But it's worth it to invade the house of that parasitic queen dwelling in her demented castle, so that she may feel the wrath of the proletariat. All we have to do is kill Prince Philip, who guards the way as an eternal lich. On top of this, there are numerous NPCs and NPC quest lines spread throughout the world, all with a series of interactions with each other depending on location and timing. For instance, you could direct nuns, prostitutes, and Prince Philip to a church run by a lonely black <laughs> sludge, then perform enough blood transfusions to send the nun into a yandere rage. Or you could direct them to the nice woman who runs the clinic down the street who only wants to help and assist others. Then take a strange path through the forest and into her clinic to discover that she has been experimenting on all of them in order to create the blue man group. And if you want, you can take the umbilical cord away from her schizophrenic ass and eat it. The sky's the limit in Bloodborne quest lines. And you know what my favorite quest line is? The one where you descend into literal hell, complete with eternal punishment, insanity, yeah. and femboy fishing the scariest <laughs> oh. of i'm of course talking about the dlc the only dlc for this game and if you uh. play through bloodborne you have to play through the dlc i'm not giving you a fucking choice so to learn <laughs> why you should play the best expansion ever made since spore galactic adventures Jump jungles come with me on this amazing journey to find the secrets of the bloodborne the old hunters do you know what i seriously forget that the dlc isn't part of the base game I think because it's just so perfect and it just so seamlessly fits into the narrative and into the game, I completely forget. I met someone the other day. We were at a wedding, actually, if you must know, and um, someone came up to me and said that um, they noticed my Bloodborne tattoo on my leg and I was like, oh, cool, Bloodborne, woohoo. And I asked if they'd be um, Orphan of Cost and they were like, I haven't played the DLC. And I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah. I forget it's in the DLC. Play it. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I want you to imagine hell. Now imagine hell written by H.P. Lovecraft. It will be filled with squids, immigrants, and air conditioning. This DLC has none of that except the squids. For you see, those college kids from the lore section of the video were built fucking different. They experimented on an entire village and possibly beat up a god of the sea so fucking bad that her consciousness in the ninth dimension died. We spent an entire game killing an infant and these guys somehow killed the milf god. But anyways, in the process of this, it cursed them and all of the hunters to be doomed to a hell 
hell upon death, where they will hunt in a bloodthirsty rage without rest for all eternity, indistinguishable from a political subreddit. Case in point, this is Ludwig. He's the first boss of the DLC Ludwig. and has a reputation for causing refunds. Not because he's bad, but because he's too good for you. The first phase is as difficult for me as realizing that Golden Corral is not actually a real corral. But like every restaurant except Golden Corral, the rewards at the end are delicious because his second phase is even harder. Now, I'm not going to lie, this DLC has four bosses and three of the hardest bosses I have ever fought in any video game yeah, ever. Open. So your ass will yeah. be clenched the entire time, and the fact yeah. that he's the third hardest is fucking concerning. Some people tell me, Maxor, your videos have gotten me through tough times because they made me laugh. But like this boss, you are the one who is truly overcoming these challenges, and I believe in your ability to beat both of them. King Aww. Boss Lightning Round. The DLC has many such cases of amazing bosses, including Lady Maria, who is the basis for German's extremely creepy eight foot tall doll fetish, but we'll get back to that. I've never noticed how tall the doll is. I've never noticed that. I don't know why. I think I kind of assumed she was on a bit of a hill and we were just sort of standing below her, but she's massive. That's kind of gross and kind of cool. And Orphan of Cause, who was born from the literal dead body of a god. If you enjoy the sensation of being beaten to death with a sharpened placenta, this is the fight for you. And as with Every everything day. that From Software makes, they threw in a boss that they didn't really finish and called it a day. I'm of course talking about Lawrence, which is a very mundane name for a fire monster locked in hell. Take my advice, don't <laughs> fight Lawrence, you only so lose true. a part of yourself. Since this boss fights you by dropping off his own legs and then violently vomiting and shitting lava everywhere. <laughs> I've always wanted my game about dynamic dodging and elaborate fencing to be reduced to shitty area denial like it's Team Fortress 2. To wrap things up, the music of this game is pretty good, but the DLC music is fucking insane. Next I don't know what it is about Japanese composers being able to make better symphonies than the continent that invented them, but just take a listen. Oh. Holy shit, I am alive right now. Have you ever thought, it's as so I do, good. that this game is just too good? That you would really rather be playing a shittier version of the game? Such as the engagement of the Chalice Dungeons. I, of mm. course, jest. They're fine, probably, I except for half of them. Because Bloodborne has an optional system of infinite dungeon generation for all of those who wish to break free of the shackles of good level design. Let's talk about <laughs> how, and more importantly, why. I, I'm not First of all, fan, Bloodborne has a system of really. dungeons that everyone shares and dungeons that are random. For my footage, I played the shared dungeons that you can be guaranteed the oh. pain you witness on screen is mandatory. Scary. One of the biggest strengths of Bloodborne is the ability to have interesting and challenging enemy encounters gently rubbed with the bloodstained hands of Miyazaki. But I don't think I have to explain to you how randomizing almost every encounter in the game could be imbalanced. But fortunately, most enemies you encounter in the Chalice dungeons are new to spare British people your wrath, so you instead fight SCP-96. But why are we here? <laughs> it turns out that the entire city of London was built on a Celtic burial ground, an ancient civilization called the Tumerians who discovered the healing powers of blood and then mysteriously disappeared. Wow, I wonder what happened. This is all yeah. cool in theory, but the reality <laughs> is that most of the time you fight the same four enemies, and the first three dungeons can be replaced by Simon Says. My cat literally wouldn't notice. Oh. The chalice dungeons are so forgotten that the developers use them to put joke enemies into the game. My favorite is the man who aggressively rolls it you stark naked wearing only his Nikes. The uniqueness also <laughs> extends to the bosses, and they're actually pretty cool, like two Marian descendant, watchdog, yeah. and the three overweight men. Do you remember that basic enemy from like two levels? He is the boss now. Rom, he is the boss again. The only thing stopping me from throwing myself into a wood chipper is the fact that Miklash isn't back. And if you're going to have True. replays, you probably want to make sure that they're actually good. In fact, the bosses are so fucking imbalanced that the watchdog fight is primarily comprised of instant kill attacks. I I beat oh, Sekiro so backwards on a keyboard, and this shit is too fucking much. Now, normally that would be all, but the dungeons go deeper. What we have discussed so far is merely the surface, and there is a much darker syndicate lying Ooh. just below. These places you must never venture, for they are the save edit dungeons, whereby through oh, no. wizardry, the community are able to conjure up deep, dark chasms and share them with the rest of the world. Of these secrets, there are only two that I shall reveal to you, and the first is the Cub Dungeon. Yes, oh, you heard that correctly and clearly. Dungeon. The Cum Dungeon is the name of the most <laughs> optimal farming route ever conceived by the fucking cricket people who do this shit. Whereby, the player enters the chasm of place name and watches as a high-level boss yeets itself off a cliff. Murgo's pig fisting route can give you 10,000 echoes. This gives 83,000. And if you so thought insane. that that sorcery was bad, it gets much worse. You can insert anything from the game files by save editing a chalice dungeon. 
anything. This includes cut and unfinished content from the game that the developers Whoa. forgot to delete. Like this doggo who attacks you with invisible lightning. Overall, the chalice dungeons are bad. They're not actually very fun to play, and yet I love them. Everyone loves them because they allow us to further explore a long dead game with the help of a passionate community. Now before That's we nice. sign off, I know what you're thinking. Maxor, what about the multiplayer? That I would love to talk about with all the footage I have, but it's dead. If this game releases on PC and it better, then I will talk about the multiplayer extensively. And finally, this game and this video would not be complete if I didn't talk about the hunter's dream. Yes. After all the combat, the battles, Please. and the difficulty of this game, it's nice to have a place to recharge, purchase items, upgrade weapons, and watch as it violently burns to the ground. This is where you'll find German slowly wasting away as his soul remains captive for an eternity, and his doll waifu that he sold his existence to be with. She talks to you, levels you up, offers you advice, and German says you're allowed to have sex with her. When I fell down and felt defeated, she was there to pick me up. When I <laughs> emoted at her randomly, she pretended She's to be so impressed. Big. And she was there, graciously standing in the background of this one shot that I took of myself. She is our waifu now, and the game <laughs> is perfect and complete because she is in it. Now excuse Aww. me as I engage in the supplementary lore material. Should you get the <laughs> game? Yes, absolutely. I am biased. Bruh. In fact, you should physically enter Sony's headquarters and demand that it be ported to PC. <laughs> I will be right there with you. Tasers will not stop me. I would like to thank the corrupt <laughs> hackers and politicians funneling money into this channel directly from the taxpayer. If you would like to contribute your funds accrued through extensive federal government corruption, you can head to my Patreon to learn more. I would also like to thank the kind denizens of the Mythbuster Smut Discord who sent me half the memes in this video. And as always, thank you for watching. Oh my god. Okay. <clears throat> Let's unpack that. Um, I want to get it on a nice freeze frame to have a chat. Where shall we? Is there one? I wanted one with the doll, not the placenta babies. That was amazing. I feel like I want to sub to Maxwell's Patreon now as well. I'm already on Varty's after the Varty videos we've watched. So eventually I'm just going to have a lot of monthly subscriptions to all these amazing creators. So that was utterly mad in the best way. I didn't expect it to be like that, but that was so good. I fear we only just scratched the surface. It was quite hard to digest a lot of that <laughs> from a law perspective, but it was still good. It was maybe not the <laughs> detailed video I thought it would be, but it was like way more fun than I imagined. And it's cheered me up a lot because I really needed it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it too. I always say to people who are going to play the Chalice Dungeons, like play them co-op because I find them quite boring on their own. But I love playing them with friends. It's such a good time because uh, they are daft. They are daft, um, but they're good to play online. I just forget how much I love Bloodborne, which sounds ridiculous, but I I forget. Like it's it's the perfect game. PC port when? 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 I am actually interested. It's it's piqued my interest thinking about the greater will and the uh, the outer gods and, and whatever. The parallels between Bloodborne and Elden Ring. I want to unpack that a little bit more one day. Uh, maybe check out if anyone else has, has made any kind of investigation into that. If not, I'll have to do it. Um, and I don't make video essays, so that could be interesting. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for your patience with me lately. I do apologize about the lack of content, but I, like I said, have not been well. So I hope that this Bloodborne law video finds you well, and we will be back on Sekiro next week. So, and we'll be watching some more Elden Ring as well. Uh, Elden Ring law vids. Um, but yeah. Let me know what you think. Let me know any thoughts you have about Bloodborne. That would be nice. I hope you like this video. Go show Max Orr some love as well. Um, and yeah, until the next one, take care. I'll see you very soon.